Hello, guys and gals, and this is uh, going to be the first issue, episode of The World of Warcraft, the official cookbook by Chelsea Monroe Castle. Again, I just want to say here right at the beginning, um, if there are any um, copyright issues with me reading this on YouTube, um, please send uh, an email to um, the PayPal link. And, um, I will take it down immediately. Um, I don't want to cause any trouble. I, I, I respect copyrights. And if there's any issues with copyright at all, just let me know and I will gladly take down the video, delete it, and it'll be, and it'll be gone. I've got content that I can use in, instead of this. But, um, I thought it'd be cool to read this on the air and maybe some people would find it flattering. I don't know. Um, I'm a big fan of World of Warcraft. I have, I used to play World of Warcraft quite a bit. I played from Lich Clean, the Lich King all the way up through Legion, I believe. And, um, so yeah. I'm trying to get, uh, stabilize my phone here. But yeah, this is, um, a cookbook and I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go. But, um, again, I just wanted to say, you know, if there's any issue with the copyright, just tell me and I'll... Take the video down immediately. I just love the art in here too. That's um, that's obviously Morose from um, Karazhan, and that's the um, the people that you fight in Morose's um, dining hall. I loved Karazhan, so of course I knew about it. Um, and the art is really nice too pictures. This is by Insight Editions. But yeah, I don't want to cause any trouble here by reading books online. I do this to help. Um, this is a, a non-for-profit thing. Sure, there is copy, there is, um, you know, donation information in the description, but to this date, I've gotten no donations at all whatsoever. So basically, it's put out there, put down there as a, um, basically just, because people expect it. And let's see, there we have a Pandaren with some dwarves. Pandaren was the first, um, race that was, could either be Horde or Alliance, which was, I thought was pretty cool. Okay, now, first of all, we're going to read this, um, note from the author, and I'm, I want to apologize about the glare. The glare here is, like, terrible, but I'm sorry about that. Uh, the difficulty with creating real recipes for fictional dishes lies in the world bu oh lies in the world building. Sometimes the world is not rich enough, not fully imagined enough to provide adequate details about the food. In those cases, a stew is just a stew and bread is plain old boring bread no matter how sustained but then there are fictional realms that are so inventive, so creative and unique that they are instantly immersive. The World of Warcraft is just such a place where fish, both common and rare, can be caught in, bound in countless bodies of water, where the farmers of, Pandar of Pandaria battle vermin that threaten their crops of enormous vegetables, and where an unusually high number of non-player characters need help collecting ingredients for recipes, both delicious and dodgy. Amen to that. Um, and while a lack of detail can provide pro can, pr can prove problematic, that is a tongue I love, <laughs> and while a lack of detail can prove problematic, so too can having such a wealth of, have a, such a wealth of them. Cooking mythological creatures is is all well and good when sitting in front of a computer, but when it, when it comes to bringing that recipe to life in the kitchen, well, let's just say it can get complicated. In creating this cookbook, I tried to keep things relatively simple while staying as true as possible to the dishes and recipes within the game. I hope you'll find some of your old favorites and perhaps discover a few new ones too. Here's hoping you... You all stay well fed on your journey through this book. Chelsea Monroe Castle. And right there we have, that is a Pandaren Bridge, I believe. Okay, again. 
cooking Azerothian food. And those cookies are neat, too. The Horde and the Alliance. Yeah, cool. I played both, by the way. The trick to cooking Azerothian... Azerothian I'm going to say Azerothian. It's probably Azeroth, Azerothian. But, um... The, the trick to cooking Azerothian cuisine is learning to build a proper cooking fire. Start with some kindling, twigs, and then what? Oh, you want to cook those dishes in your own home. Well, I suppose that's reasonable. More than reasonable, really. Gives Oh, given that these recipes started as items in a game, it's only natural that some amount of adjustment was bound to happen during their transformation into real food. In that case, just swing by your local market for some fresh chimarock chops. Then take your giant wheelbarrow to the auction house for for juicy crunch carrot. So you can... Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Wait. What do you mean there are no chimer, uh, chimarock, chimarocks in your world? Seriously. Why did you even buy this cookbook if the recipes all rely on ingredients that are imaginary? Don't worry. It's the very reason that you can already imagine... Don't worry, the very reason that you can already imagine what these fictional dishes taste like is because the food of Azeroth has a basis in our own reality. Just because we are using non-imaginary ingredients and, and a modern kitchen doesn't mean we have to settle for anything less than the delicious cuisine that evokes the aesthetic of World of Warcraft. The right spices, peppers, salts, vegetables, and meat can make the difference between a dish that leaves a lot to be imagined, and one that just might convince you that you're on the plains of Mulgor, after all. Uh, if you have access to game, to game meat, great. What, want the lukewarm yak roast broth and to taste more unique? Go find some bison meat. Uh, new recipes are a perfect excuse to try something you've never had before. So go on. So go on a quest through your local food market. Despite the um, impressive globalization of foodstuffs in the modern world, good spices remain one of those items. Uh, good spices remain one of those items that that rec uh, that have reclaimed, oh no, retained just a hint of the exotic. Nothing beats a whiff of warm, fresh cinnamon or the cool, peppery bite of juniper berries. Spices have been measured throughout the ages, ages, and that connection with history remains with them, given, oh, giving this dish rich, uh, richer feeling and authenticity. Don't be a kitchen noob. Level up, uh, level up your seasoning collection. If you've been hoarding the same bottle of drowned ground cinnamon for the last decade, it's probably time to time to bin it and in favor of some fresh stuff. Experiment with interesting new peppers or various types of salt. It's an adventure and will likely end with some really tasty food. Okay. Sorry, it took me so long to read that. Okay, now dietary restrictions. Uh, there's a um, tusker. Yeah, that's a tusker. Anthropomorphic uh, walrus. Dietary restrictions. In this day and age, many of us struggle with our own dietary restrictions and sensitivities or cook for someone who does. As I am not proficient in cooking with such restrictions, I suspect that in many of these cases you will know more about the subject than I ever would. Uh, could, rather. In the back of this book is, is a helpful list of all the recipes covered, organized into sections for vegetarians, vegans, and gluten-free cooking. In addition, a number of recipes are marked to indicate that, with a few small changes, they can be made to fit one of those categories. Here are a few guidelines to help you customize the recipes in this book into something you can enjoy worry-free. Adapting to Vegetarian Diets While there are many recipes in this book suited for a vegetarian lifestyle, there are also a number that can be adapted for a vegetarian diet. Depending on the recipe, the changes might be as simple as swapping the chicken broth for a vegetable or mushroom-based broth. Love the sound of a sauce that's meant to go over a piece of meat? Pour it over your favorite meat substitute or grilled vegetables instead. Now, adapting to gluten-free diets. A, way, a wide array of gluten-free flour mixes 
is commercially available both online and in many grocery shops. And these have been ex ex exhaustively tested to perform as well as possible in both baking and cooking. Here are some basic guidelines. Breads. These can be among the trickiest recipes to adapt for a gluten-free lifestyle. Generally, I would recommend adding what's the loaf unique to your favorite gluten-free bread recipe. As with the recipes from Woolgore Spice Bread and, and Caldori Pine Nut Bread, or in the case or in the case of soft banana bread or sweet potato bread, try substituting one one to one um, gluten-free flour for the regular version in the recipe. Thickening. If a small amount of flour is included in a recipe as a thickening agent, try substituting cornstarch, rice flour, or your favorite gluten-free flour mix. Above all, don't be afraid to experiment. Even if you don't need to change anything for a diet dietary concern, feel free to toy with the ingredients list. The best recipe in the world is still just a, st is still just a starting point. So adapt to your own tastes and inspirations. Play, eat, enjoy. Okay. That is, um, oh, I think that's Garrosh. That's his axe, anyways. I don't remember what his wolf's name is, though. His mount. I'm sure it had a name. Achievements. To master the fusion of flavors and advent uh, an adventurer must have a dedication, patience, and the willingness to try unusual recipes. Undertake the following to become a master cook. Leveling up as a cook. Level up by making five dishes for each path, starting out with an, an apprentice level recipe and work your way to the master level recipes. One, make five of each, make five from each. The way of the nibble, the way of the loaf, the way of the broth, the way of the entree, the way of the sweet, the way of the tankard. Two, you are now a master cook. Go forth and feed the masses. I'm just going to take a quick look at that. And this reminds me of Pandaren cooking, actually, because there's the way of the walk, there's the way of all the different things. Back when you get your own farm. I can't remember where that is, though. It's been too long. And now, let's see. We're going to look at these different spices here. Beautiful. And then there's the, a Tusker. A Tusker again. They were a um, Lich King Northrend race. Okay, it says, Spices and Basics. Ancient Pandaren Spices, and on page 17, Autumnal Herbs is 18, Holiday Spices 19, Northern Spices 20, Whipped Cream 21, Royal Icing for Cookies 21, Drizzled Icing and Glaze 22, Flaky Pie Dough 22, and Buttery Pastry Dough 23. Let's go. Ancient Pandaren Spices, and up there is the, the in-game picture used for it. It's apprentice level. It takes five minutes to prep and makes about a fourth cup. And there we go. It says, These spices have been a staple a staple ingredient in pandarin recipes for millennia. Since before the time of Emperor Xiaohao, the unique blend of ingredients will bring that history right to your kitchen. And all you need is three teaspoons Szechuan peppercorns, two teaspoons fennel seeds, two teaspoons ground cinnamon, one teaspoon ground anise. I'm not swearing here. It's, I, I don't know how you pronounce I think it's pronounced anise. We're going to say anise. Uh, one teaspoon ground cloves, one teaspoon ground cardamom. Okay, and it says, one, place all the spices in a dry pan and gently toast them over medium heat for several minutes. Swirl the pan occasionally to keep the mixture from burning. Once the spices are giving off a lovely fragrance and have a darkened and, and have darkened slightly, remove from heat and allow to cool. Transfer the mixture into a spice grinder or coffee grinder and process until you have a fine powder. Store in a small airtight jar out of direct sunlight. This mix will keep for several months, but it is but it is best when fresh. It is used in spiced blossom soup, page one hundred three. Palm fruit slices, page 181, and rice pudding, page 185. Autumnal herbs. I do remember these. These you would get during Pilgrim's Bounty. 
And there's the picture. It is an apprentice recipe. It takes five minutes and makes about a fourth cup. Uh, we're going to look at the holiday spices first, though, so I don't have to look through the viewfinder here. It says, um, as the days grow short... Wait, did I read the description on this one? Oh, yeah, I have. Oh, I did. Okay. Sorry, I just want to make sure I make... I want to make sure I don't make a mistake. As the days grow short and chilly, our thoughts often turn to time with friends and family and occasionally best... Oh, and, and occasions best marked with feasts. This herb mixture is a favorite of Stormwind chefs and as they prepare vast meals to celebrate harvest during Pilgrim's Bounty. Okay. And there we go. That's them right there. They're really pretty, too. What you will need is two, two tablespoons dried rosemary, uh, two teaspoons dried thyme, one teaspoon dried marjoram. That's marjoram, not margarine, by the way, marjoram. Uh, one... One half teaspoon ground cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon ground nutmeg, one fourth teaspoon ground ginger, and one teaspoon blue cornflower petals. And those are optional. Uh, combine all spices except the petals, and run through the spice grinder or a coffee grinder until they are no there are no large pieces remaining. Add to the pe- oh, add in the petals and store in an airtight jar. It is used in the candied sweet potatoes on page 31 and the slow roasted turkey on page 141. Next, we have the holiday spices. And it is a, an apprentice level recipe. Prep time is five minutes and it makes about a fourth a cup. A fourth cup. Okay, it says, here we go. It looks really pretty, by the way. With all the warmth and flavor imbued by these spices, an ordinary dish gets a little boost of holiday cheer for the Feast of Winter Vale. You'll need these spices to whip up Great Father Winter's favorite treats for his yearly visit. What you will need is one tablespoon ground ginger, one tablespoon ground cinnamon, one tablespoon ground nutmeg, one half tablespoon ground cloves, and one fourth tablespoon ground pepper. Combine all spices, store in an airtight container. Used in gingerbread cookies on page 169, pumpkin pie, page 183, and hot apple cider on page 202. So, these will not be in this episode. Northern Spices. This is an apprentice level recipe. Prep time is five minutes and it makes about a fourth cup. It says, this aromatic blend of spices will not only increase the flavor of any given recipe, but also add a, add a warming element to dishes. That warmth is a welcome addition in the chilly region of Northrend, from which these delicious spices are traditionally gathered. And that, they're right here. Okay, it says, what you will need is one tablespoon cardamom, uh, one tablespoon dried juniper berries, one teaspoon smoked salt, one half teaspoon pepper, one half teaspoon ginger, one fourth teaspoon allspice or nutmeg. Combine spices and run through a spice grinder or coffee grinder until until there are no longer any large pieces remaining. Store in an airtight jar. These spices are used in tracker snacks on page 59, steaming chicken soup, page 105, firecracker salmon, page 123, and tender shovel tusk snake, uh, steak, snake, tender shovel tusk steak, page 143. Okay, moving on to whipped cream. Uh, Whipped cream. Uh, Skill level is apprentice. Prep time is five minutes and it makes about four cups. What you will need is whipped, whip the cream to soften peaks with an electric mixer for about three minutes. Oh, wait. Sorry. Let's read the ingredients first. I got ahead of myself. Sorry about that. Ingredients for basic. Uh, Okay. One pint whipping cream, one or to two tablespoons white sugar, and a dash of vanilla. Now, um, it says um, whip, uh, whip the cream to soft peaks using electric mixer for about three minutes. Add the sugar and any other flavorings listed below by recipe. And whip those in by hand. 
For pumpkin pie, substitute brown sugar for regular sugar. For the sugar-dusted chow twists, add one half teaspoon ground cinnamon and one half teaspoon orange blossom water. For the chocolate celebration cake, add one half cup of Nutella or other hazelnut spread softened, two teaspo- oh, two tablespoons rather of cocoa powder, and a pinch of ground cinnamon. It says um, here that um, it is used in the chocolate celebration cake, which is on page 153, pumpkin pie, which is on page 183, and sugar-dusted chow twists, which is on page 189. Now, royal icing for cookies. And it says here that the it's an apprentice level uh, skill recipe. Uh, it's 10 minutes prep time, and it makes two cups enough for one batch of cookies. Okay, it says, now, okay, what you will need for this recipe is two cups, uh, sifted confectioner's sugar, two and a half tablespoons water, one and a half tablespoons meringue powder, uh, food coloring as needed. And here we go. It says, beat all ingredients at low speed for seven to ten minutes or until icing forms peaks. Tip. After beating, keep icing covered with a wet kitchen towel as it can dry out quickly. Used in the chocolate cookies on page 155 and the gingerbread cookies on page 169. Cook's note. To make enough for both cookie recipes, double the ingredients. Okay. On to the next page. This is probably going to go a little bit long, but we're going to see. Again, I don't, I don't want to get copyright struck on this, so I don't know if this is going to be a regular um, series or not. I've got backup content just in case. Drizzled icing and glaze. This is an apprentice-level recipe. Prep time is five minutes, and it makes about a cup. It says um, it requires one cup of confectioner sugar, a dash of vanilla, and two to three tablespoons of milk. Uh, it says, combine the confectioner sugar and vanilla, then gradually add the milk, stirring vigorously to eliminate any lumps. Aim for a thick, smooth consistency that you can still drizzle. It is for, oh, now for the Rylac clause, you add one tablespoon of honey and reduce milk to one, to one, oh, to one to two tablespoons. For the sugar-dusted chow twists, leave out the vanilla, add two tablespoons of runny honey. Warm up if necessary. For the conjured manna strudel, replace the milk with heavy cream, which will give the icing more body. It is used in the conjured manna strudel on page 159, the rilac claws on page 187, and the sugar-dusted chow twist on page 189. Now we are ready for the flaky pie dough. It is a, an apprentice-level recipe. Uh, prep time is 15 minutes. You chill it for 30 minutes, and it makes one batch. It says, uh, what you need is two and one-fourth cups flour, one stick cold salted butter cut into large chunks, and one-fourth cup of water. Now it says, divide the butter in half. In a medium-sized bowl, rub half the butter into the, in, oh, into the flour until you have small small pieces of butter the size of peas. Using your palm, press the other half of the butter pieces into flat flakes and and add them to the bowl. Add the water gently, mixing until you have a moist, cohesive dough. Form into flat round oh flat form into a flat round, wrap in plastic and chill for thirty minutes. Take out the chilled dough and set it on a lightly floured surface. Sprinkle a little extra flour on top and roll it out into a large rectangle. Fold the dough into thirds and r- rotate. Roll okay. Roll out into another large rectangle and fold into thirds again. This will this will make your dough flaky and light. Roll out one last time to a smaller rectangle, cut into two equal pieces, wrap in plastic and chill until ready to use. And a cook's note. When making this dough for bloodberry tart, add two tablespoons of granulated sugar and replace one-fourth cup of flour with almond meal. 
Now, I forgot. I realized that we forgot to go over the ingredients with this one. I'm sorry. We're going to do that now. Oh, wait. No, we already did. I remember. Uh, it says this is used in Gracu's homemade meat pie on page 127, Bloodberry tart on page 149, Cheery Cherry Pie on page 151, and Pumpkin Pie on page 183. Now, we are ready for buttery pastry dough. This is an apprentice level recipe. Prep time is 15 minutes. It takes six hours to chill. You chill it for six hours, in other words. And it makes 20 rilac claws, two strudel, or 20 croissants. Okay, it says what you need is uh, one half cup warm water, two teaspoons active dry yeast, one fourth cup white sugar, two eggs plus one egg for, for glazing. One half cup heavy cream, three and a half cups all purpose flour plus more for dusting, uh, one cup two sticks, one cup or two sticks of unsalted butter, cold cut into pieces, and one half teaspoon salt. Okay. It says in a large bowl, combine the warm water, yeast, and a pinch of a pinch of the sugar. Let sit for a few minutes until the yeast has started to bloom. Meanwhile, add the flour pieces of butter and salt to a, food, to a food processor. Pulse until the pieces of butter are roughly the size of beans. Um, add the rest of the sugar, two eggs, and heavy cream to a bowl with the yeast. Stir vigorously to combine. Gradually add in the flour, the butter, and butter mixture. Working until the mixture just comes together. Divide in half, press the dough into two round discs, Wrap with plastic and chill for at least six hours. The chilled dough will be kept several days if well wrapped. Working with one chilled dough dit one chill oh blah 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 blah. Excuse me. Working with one chilled disc of dough at a time, transfer to a lightly floured surface, dusting both sides of the dough with extra flour as needed. Use a rolling pin, beat and roll the dough into a long to a long, flat rectangle. Fold both edges over like a letter, making three layers of dough. Roll, roll flat, then rotate the dough and repeat the folding and rolling. Rewrap and return to the fridge to chill until needed. Dough can be frozen for up to two months. Cook's notes. Uh, the dough bakes up rich and flaky, buttery to the taste, and oh so delicious because the batch of dough is so large, consider splitting it in half and trying two different recipes. It says that this is used for conjured croissants on page 67, conjured manistrudel on page 159, and rilac claws on page 187. And that's going to do it for this episode. It looks like we are ready for side dishes, the way of the nibble. And we are going to look at these pictures real quick. These look beautiful, by the way. But yeah, we have been reading from the official World of Warcraft cookbook, or World of Warcraft, the official cookbook by Chelsea Monroe Castle. And, um, yeah. Uh, but if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. Also, if you want to support me in any way at all, that information is in the description below, though that's kind of pointless. No one ever supports me, <laughs> which is fine. I do this basically just to help people get through the COVID, you know? And that's that. Uh, but anyways, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate all the views. And um, thanks for watching, everyone. And have a great day.